हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद माय लेक्चर सीरीज फॉर एके टू एनर्जी साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग पेपर यूनिट वन नाउ आई एम बिगिनिंग लेक्चर फाइव अर्लियर आई हैव ब्रीफ्ड यू अबाउट एंट्रोपी आई हैव ब्रीफ्ड यू अबाउट वेपर कंप्रेशन साइकिल फेज मटेरियल देयर चेंजेस एक्सेट्रा नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट विथ रेफ्रिजरेटर एंड हीट पंप a very favorite question of akt you what you have to write in that answer i will tell first let me make you understand refrigerator basically refrigerator is also like a heat engine which is work is done on the refrigerant substance in order to collect energy from cold region and exhaust it in the higher temperature region thereby further cooling the cold region it consists of prion gases and which can be forced to evaporate and then condense by successively lowering and raising the pressure therefore they can pump energy from cold region to hot region by extracting heat look at this diagram here from the cold reservoir refrigerator here is the heat getting extracted and going to the hot reservoir and this way my refrigerator is cooling whatever is kept inside it in refrigeration cycle there are five basic concept components a fluid refrigerator a compressor a condenser an evaporator coil and an expansion device the compressor constricts the refrigerant vapor raising its pressure and pushing it into the coils on the outside of the refrigerator when the hot gas in the coil meets the cooler air temperature of the kitchen it becomes a liquid now in the liquid form at high pressure the refrigerant cools down as it flows into the coil lastly the refrigerant evaporates and then flows back into the compressor as i told you earlier the desired effect of a refrigerator under a steady state is basically to pump heat out heat in the same rate as it is inflating it into the system for this refrigerator is taking w amount of external work here you can see in this diagram therefore the coefficient of performance in your whole paper coefficient of performance is like the ratio of output to input that is q2 by w from first law of thermodynamics we have total q is equal to the total work done so coefficient of performance comes out as q2 upon q1 minus q2 for heat pump the coefficient of performance once again is the desired effect divided by work input so a heat pump is a mechanical compression cycle that can be reversed to either heat or cool a controlled space a typical heat pump consists of an indoor unit called an air handler and an outdoor unit similar to an air output unit internal combustion engines the engines in which the combination takes place inside the engine or within the cylinder are known as internal combustion engines they are of two types the spark ignition engine and the compression ignition engine they are further divided into the four stroke and the two stroke internal combustion engine in this heat engine the combustion of fuel occurs with an oxidizer usually air in a combustion chamber as you can see this is a combustion engine cylinder as found in a four stroke gasoline c is your crankshaft e is the exhaust camshaft i the inlet and p piston r connecting rods s spark b valves w the cooling water jacket i will explain this to you in more detail here comparison between external combustion engine and internal combustion engine 
these heat internal engines according to the basic design uh, the type of fuel used is petrol diesel or gas according to the number of strokes that is four stroke or two stroke according to the method of igniting the fuel that is spark ignition compression ignition according to the working cycle that is auto cycle diesel cycle dual combustion cycle according to the fuel supply that is carburetted type injection type according to the number of cylinders single cylinder multi cylinder speed of engine slow or high cylinder arrangement vertical or horizontal application automotive engines with land transport marine engines for propulsion of ships aircraft engines for aircraft propulsion etc external combustion engine and internal combustion engine in the external combustion engine air fuel is outside the engine like a boiler combustion of air fuel in the internal is inside the engine engines are running smoothly and silently due to outside combustion internal combustion engine is very noisy higher ratio of weight and bulk to output and it is light it has a lower efficiency and the internal combustion engine has a higher efficiency main components of the reciprocating engines are cylinder it is main part of an engine which consists of piston cylinder head the top end of cylinder is covered by cylinder head over which inlet and exhaust valves spark plug or injectors are mounted piston transmits the force exerted by the burning of charge to the connecting rod piston rings connecting rods crank shaft crank case and flywheel the terminology that is used in internal combustion engines are cylindrical bore the normal inner diameter of the working cycle piston area the area of circle of diameter equal to cylindrical bore stroke the normal distance through which a working piston moves between two successive reversals of its directions and the dead center four stroke engine you can see suction compression combustion and expansion and the exhaust stroke this comparison chart has been asked in aktu to compare the four stroke and the two stroke heat engine it is important four stroke of the piston and two revolution of crank shaft the two stroke has the two stroke of piston and one revolution of crank shaft one power stroke in every two revolution one power stroke in each revolution in the four stroke it's a heavier wheel in the two stroke it is lighter flywheel in four stroke power produced is less in two stroke power produced is twice four stroke is very heavy and bulky two stroke is very light and compact four stroke lesser cooling and lubrication requirements in two stroke greater cooling and lubrication are required examples of four stroke can have car buses trucks tractors etc two stroke can be scooter motorcycle propulsion ship etc so here we have the different type of engines were the two stroke and power stroke rankin cycle is a model which is used to predict the performance of steam turbine systems it was used to study the performance of reciprocating steam engines rankin cycle is an idealized thermodynamic cycle of heat engine that converts heat into mechanical energy while undergoing phase change it is an idealized cycle in which friction losses in each of the four components are neglected ranking cycle consists of a pump a boiler a turbine and a condenser so this is a simple ranking cycle it consists of operating between pressures of 0.06 bar and 50 bar auto cycle is a set of processes used by spark ignition internal combustion engines that can be of two stroke or four stroke 
then the these uh, the other one is your diesel cycle is a compression ignition rather than smart ignition this numerical was asked in your aktu exam that two engines are to operate on auto and diesel cycle maximum temperature is 1400 kelvin exhaust temperature is 700 kelvin state of air at the beginning of compression is 0.1 at 300 kelvin estimate the compression ratio compression ratio is given by t1 upon 1 minus gamma minus 1 uh, 1 upon gamma minus 1 divided by t4 so t1 has been given as 1400 kelvin t4 has been given as 700 kelvin and gamma has been given to us as uh, what is the uh, value So maximum temperature state of air at it is one point four minus one. Barton cycle represents the operation of a gas turbine engine. The cycle consists of four processes: adiabatic, constant pressure fuel combustion, adiabatic reversal, and the jet engine components and corresponding thermodynamic states. Okay. Barton cycle less efficient than Carnot cycle. The physics of power plants factors to be considered while designing a power plant: availability of your cooling system, availability of fuel water, distance from center of gravity, etc. Thermal power plants are split into different categories: those that create electricity by burning fuel, and those that create electricity via prime mover. A common example of thermal power plant that produces electricity by the consumption of fuel is the nuclear power plant. Nuclear power plants use a nuclear reactor heat to turn water into steam. this steam is then sent through a turbine which is connected to an electric generator to generate electricity nuclear power plants account for 20% of america's electricity generation the solar power plants they are taking help or they are taking the energy from sunlight which is made accessible via photovoltaic cells or solar panels using photovoltaic cells are made of silica materials that release electrons when they are warmed by thermal energy of the sun the new flow of electron generates electricity within the cells while photovoltaics are an efficient method of producing electricity they do burn out after a decade and then they must be replaced however their efficiency cost of operation and lack of noise make them one of the cleanest and least expensive forms of energy wind power plant all these headings you will be studying more in detail in your unit 3 4 and 5 year just an introduction wind power plants also known as wind turbines are deriving their energy from wind by connecting a generator to the fan blades and using the rotational motion caused by wind to power the generator then the generated power is fed back into the power grid wind power plants can be implemented on large open expanses of grass or land of water such as oceans etc they simply rely on being in areas that experience significant amount of wind technically wind turbines are a form of solar power in that they rely on pressure differentials caused by uneven heating of earth's atmosphere their solid state physics will also play a big role in energy science because the most important uh, solid state application you can see is uh, the rigid matter of solids through methods such as quantum mechanics crystallography electromagnetism and metallurgy it is the largest branch of condensed matter physics 
so solid state physics studies how the large scale properties of solid material result from their atomic scale properties crystal structures simple cubic base cubic body centered cubic base centered cubic many such materials are affected by their crystal structure light interacting with solids light is energy and it has wave properties it travels in straight line but its direction will change across different material light energy is linked to wavelength through einstein's energy equation e equal to hc by lambda so light also interacts with these solids to generate energy light absorption in semiconductors result in the generation of electrons and holes if the light energy exceeds the energy gap increase in conductivity known as photoconductivity emission occurs when excited atoms ions return to their initial state this is known as luminescence very energetic light can cause electron emission from a metal surface this is known as photo emission black body radiation holding for black bodies which absorb all radiations and emit none cathode ray tube is a device that relies on light generation by bombardment of a phosphor using an energetic electron beam process electrical aspects properties of materials such as electrical conduction and heat capacity are investigated by solid state physics now the questions that were asked in your section a i have written them here along with the answer you can find the answer in the drop down box below the lecture and you try writing the answers for these 12 questions in a 10 mark criteria decide how much you can write in 10 marks in case of any problem you can contact me for the same thank you